Hello, everyone, and welcome to Daily Newspaper Analysis, which is presented to you by Lossico. Today, we will discuss two articles. The first article is from the Hindu newspaper, which is titled as a one health approach that targets people, animals. This article talks about the opportunity of having an, a healthcare system wherein both the humans as well as the animals can be treated properly in such a way that they do not become the cause of each other's diseases. And in a way, the spread of zoonotic diseases like the COVID-19 can be stopped in the future instances. The second article is from the Indian Express, which is titled as why a malaria vaccine candidate has raised new hope and what went into its making. This talks about the recent malaria vaccine which has come up to the forefront, which is considered to be very effective against malaria. And finally, we have the news in flash column. This analysis is presented to you by me. My name is Shaiva Khan and I had completed my BA LLB law degree in the year 2019 with a gold medal from Law College Dehradun. I have been a national debater as well as a public speaker throughout my education career. And here at Lossico, I am working as the current affairs expert and manager for free content and outreach. If you wish to connect with me, you can find both my handles for Twitter and LinkedIn there in the description box. With this, let's see what is the multiple choice question from yesterday's discussion. The term spring revolution has recently been coined in, your options are Bangladesh, Myanmar, Bhutan, or Pakistan? You can write down your answer if you know the correct one in the comment section below. This is the descriptive question for the day. How the One Health Plan can change in decreasing the chances of spread of various zoonotic diseases like the COVID-19? With this, let's get started with our discussion on the first article for the day, which talks about One Health targeting people and animals. So recently, many discussions around the world with on the World Veterinary Day on 24th April focused on acknowledging the interconnectedness of animals, humans, and environment. Now, as we know that with the growing time and development, the human has become more and more selfish and thus we have started destroying the natural habitat of various animals, due to which we have come into closer contact of various animals and this has been very much unprecedented and in the past it was never happening at this rapid rate but now it has become a very normal thing for humans to come into interaction with various kinds of wild animals. Now due to this not only human wildlife conflicts take place but also a big issue that is of the spread of various diseases like the zoonotic as well as the anthropozoonotic diseases takes place. Now, what are these and what are, the, what are the relationships amongst animals, humans and the environment has been discussed in this article. So it says that there are various diseases that are spread across various species. About two thirds of the existing and emerging infectious diseases are zoonotic. So basically zoonotic diseases are those that can be transferred between animals and humans. For example, even COVID-19 and even the predecessor of COVID-19, which was the SARS, which was the severe acute respiratory syndrome, all are the examples of zoonotic diseases. Yes, we cannot say for sure as to which animal has caused particularly the COVID-19 virus, but still this can be said with surety that this definitely is a zoonotic disease. That means that it was somehow transferred from some animal to the human being. And there are also some examples of various anthropozoonotic infections that get transferred from humans to animals. So basically those infections or diseases that can be transferred from human beings to various animals are described as anthropozoonotic infections. So some transboundary impact of viral outbreaks in the recent years are like the Nipah virus, Ebola virus, severe acute respiratory syndrome, which we just discussed about, then we also have a, almost a kin of the SARS and COVID-19, which was the MERS, M-E-R-S, which was the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. And then, of course, we have the avian influenza, which was very commonly known as the bird flu, which had also been seen recently in various states of our country as well. So if we talk particularly about the India's One Health Vision, so the vision derives its blueprint from the agreement between the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, World Organization for Animal Health and the United Nations Environment Program and World Bank, which is One World, One Health. 
So basically, all these forums have inspired this entire system of India bringing in this mission of One Health Vision. So in the 1980s, India had established a national standing committee on zoonosis. And since 2015, the Department of Animal Husbandry and Dairying launched several schemes to mitigate the prevalence of animal diseases. And in the year 2021, funds were sanctioned for setting up a center for One Health at Nagpur. So there are more than 1.7 million viruses circulating in the wildlife and most of them are zoonotic, which means that they have the capacity to get shifted or to get in infected amongst the human beings as well. Basically, the central idea that this article presents is that if at all we are able to keep all the species healthy, then it would be a better chance that none of these diseases are spread from one species to another. So in a way, if the animals are healthy, the humans will remain healthy. If the humans are healthy, the animals will remain healthy. And in the in this same manner, if the environment of both the animals as well as the humans, it remains undisrupted, which means that the humans give good space to the animals, then definitely the chances of the spread of some such zoonotic as well as anthropozoonotic diseases will reduce to great levels. And it does, it says that there is a need to consolidate existing animal health and disease surveillance systems and create mechanisms to operationalize the one health at every stage down to the village level. That is why not only at the upper levels, rather through the grassroots levels, this initiative needs to be implemented. With this, let's discuss the second article for the day, which talks about the new malaria vaccine candidate. So a malaria vaccine candidate, which is named as R21 matrix M has shown high efficacy, which is that high precision or correction rate at 77% in the phase 2B clinical trials, according to the very famous source, The Lancet. So if we talk about this vaccine candidate, it is a modified version of the RTS that has been in development for more than 30 years by Walter Reed Institute of Research, GlaxoSmithKline and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation with PATH Malaria Vaccine Initiative. So please keep in mind that this information is not really very important for us to memorize, but yes, it's good for us to know for the first instance. So the new vaccine has been developed by the Oxford University, which was the same as COVID-19 vaccine. So the same Oxford University, which has also developed the, along with AstraZeneca, has also developed this malaria, new malaria vaccine as well. So it is the first to reach WHO's goal of at least 75% efficacy, as we know that it has reached 77% efficacy. And the vaccine was produced in the Serum Institute of India. The most important thing for us to understand is that what is the significance of this new malaria vaccine? So in the year 2019, there were an estimated 229 million cases of malaria and 4,9,000 malaria-related deaths in 87 countries. So this definitely signifies that malaria is a very, very big problem to tackle with and thus we need to have such vaccines in hand. So if we talk particularly about India in the year 2019, it had an estimated 5.6 million cases and compared as compared to 20 million cases in 2020, according to the World Health Organization data. And also, the children under the age of five in the sub-Saharan Africa accounted for approximately two-thirds of the global diseases. And that is why such vaccines that, are, that have the efficacy and that are more efficient are definitely required to stop such diseases to spread. And if we talk about the COVID-19 and malaria, Approximately one third of the countries globally reported disruptions in malaria prevention, diagnosis and treatment services during the first quarter of 2021. Now, as we know that this has been a problem with the Indian country as well, wherein because of the entire focus shifting onto COVID-19, other diseases which India was fighting against, for example, tuberculosis and even malaria to say, and also dengue for, for, for that matter, the attention has been completely shifted from these diseases and that is why a rapid increase has been seen in these diseases. That is why it is ideal and important that at this point of hour, we pay equal attention to all these diseases which have equal potential of spreading and as well as causing deaths at large numbers. With this, let's see what do we have for news in flash today. So there has been a new study on the brain size. 
So as per a new study published in Science Advances, the researchers who examined the brain and body size of 140,000 living and extinct mammal species over the last 150 million years argue that it is impossible that the mammal species evolved not to have bigger brains, but smaller body size as it helped to adapt to environmental changes. So if, technically by this we mean that evolution isn't rooting for increased cognition levels in human species. So this needs to be known to us. With this, we are done for the day. We hope it was a good session for you. If in case you like this session, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends as well. For more updates, please stay tuned with Lossy Co and subscribe to our channels to never miss an update in the future.